there's a hidden gem on the Nintendo 64 that you probably haven't heard of, much less played. Winback, developed by Koei's Omega Force Studio, was released in 1999 for the system and was an anomaly for Koei, a company that was much better known for creating the Dynasty Warrior series and other historical battle games. Winback, while relatively unknown today, has the prestigious historical position of being the first 3D third-person cover-based shooter a game mechanic which was later featured in games like Kill Switch and the Gears of War series. Now for some historical context here, the cover-based first-person shooter Time Crisis came out in arcades in 1995 and for the PlayStation in 97. In 98, the PlayStation was also graced with the critically acclaimed Metal Gear Solid, a game that also had a cover system though it was used for stealth rather than combat. Nevertheless, when Winback came around in 1999, it was sometimes branded as a Metal Gear Solid ripoff, though besides having a vaguely similar visual style, they were really nothing alike. Winback begins by setting up a fairly simple plot. Terrorists have taken control of a satellite-based weapon that they intend to use for, um, terroristismness. Hmm, sounds familiar. Where is the golden eye? I assumed you had it. You, as Jean-Luc Cougar, must kill hundreds of people and infiltrate the military complex to stop the space laser from emitting terror. Your scat team has to drop out of a helicopter. Wait, wait, scat? <laughs> Jean-Luc Cougar scat. Hmm. Yep, special covert action team. I know Koei is a Japanese developer, but really, no one on the translation team picked up on the fact that the team is called scat? Could have been worse, I guess. They could have called it Program of Overt Patriots or uh, Tactical Usurp and Reconnaissance Deployment or Freakishly Awesome Recon Team. All right, okay, okay, okay. No more poop jokes. Special Hostile Intercept Team. Hey, that one would actually work. Anyway, the story is inconsequential. There are several twists near the end that try to convolute it and make it into something a little more impactful, but it's really just kind of there. However, the developer has gone to great lengths to get you involved in the characters themselves. There are a lot of long cinema scenes with dialogue between the characters as they hash out what to do next. It's somewhat reminiscent of old action movie dialogue where the characters are engaging in banter and joke making that's uh, pretty cheesy at times. The graphics in Winback are a mixed bag. Characters in particular look really good actually and have great facial detail, allowing for some fairly tight shots and cinema scenes and each of the main characters has a very distinct visual identity. They're also very well animated, and their chests even expand up and down with their breathing, which adds a bit of polish. Although, this guy's supposed to be dead right now. Otherwise, the graphics are straightforward, simple, often bland. Nothing really stands out as great, and there are a lot of repeating textures and messy details. These trees are an eyesore as are all of these fences. And if there's one color I would associate with this game, it would be gray. Gray, gray, gray. Still, I should say the game has some pretty nice touches. Bullet hole decals, shell casings fly from your guns and bounce along the ground, and there's also dynamic lighting from muzzle flashes and the environment. Partway through the game, you get a flashlight that can be used with any of your weapons. Its beam looks pretty cool, and it does affect the illumination to some degree, but Really, you can easily get by without ever turning it on, and it seems to me that it slows the frame rate slightly anyway. Besides, I thought this was special covert action team, not special overt action team. Ha! <laughs> That's right, keep waving that thing around. The sight on your gun is a thin red laser line that actually works pretty well. It looks fairly realistic, and it terminates in a nice big red dot that's pretty easy to see. Look at that, it covers that dude's entire face! Sound effects are decent, and the way that enemies call out to each other when they see you seems natural. Most of the ambient music is fine, although some of the more intense moments sound like a rave. You also get some dynamic music that gets more intense as your health goes down, but it gets really annoying really fast. <clears throat> All the more reason to keep your health up. When you start the game, you're given a chance to do a quick tutorial before you jump into the story mode. 
This instruction is necessary as the controls for this game are unlike any other for the system. Even though they're unique, however, the controls in Winback are easily the game's best aspect, and once you get the hang of them, it's easy to see why. They're solid, responsive, and relatively intuitive, and even though you can't jump or move while you shoot, within the game's level design, everything works really well, and the cover mechanic is very refined. As you move through the stages of the game, each enemy confrontation plays out similarly. Find cover, assess your targets, and then pick them off one by one as you pop out from cover. Shooting and moving quickly becomes very fluid, and you'll find some of the sections of the game very fun because of it. Hits on enemies are characterized by a flash of light, blue for a limb shot, green for body, and red for dead in the head. The reaction movements enemies do as they get hit are also very impressive, but look out because it also applies to Jean-Luc. Crouch at the wrong time, you can take a bullet to the head, and on hard, that could mean instant death. When you get hit in win back, you go into a temporary stunned state, where you can't get hit again for a couple of seconds. But unlike most games, you can take multiple hits at a time if they're rapid enough. This can make the game really difficult on the harder settings, as you can make a wrong move and find yourself out in the open, suddenly taking a barrage of bullets. As you move into any new area, you'll often see enemies populate in front of you, and almost like a strategy game, you'll have to quickly decide where to take cover before they get into position and start firing. There are also boss fights every few stages, and here's where combat can get really frustrating. Bosses are crazy comic book-like characters with special weapons, and it's one of the few situations where you might find that the cover-based combat doesn't work. A lot of these bosses just run around like maniacs, or they have explosives that go right through your cover anyway. Particularly bad are this guy with the grenades, the flamethrower dude, and this super rocket launcher Mario, but really you'll find something to hate about every one of them. The first one isn't too bad, but her cackle reminds me of the great fairy. <laughs> Otherwise enemies tend to keep their distance, but you might have the occasional dude run up to you and try to shank the scat out of you. Yes, there is melee combat, but only if you're desperate. You can take out guards silently with one hit by whacking them from behind, but if a guard is already facing you, kicking him to death will take forever, and he'll probably beat you to it anyway. Besides this, there's hardly ever a good reason to use stealth. Just shoot him. You've got unlimited ammo for your pistol anyway. You'll need to find ammo for your shotgun and submachine gun, however, which you also start out with. The weapons are the real shortcoming of Winback, I think, as the advantages of using the secondary weapons are trivial at best. The shotgun's utility is totally mysterious to me. At really close range, sure, you might be able to take out a guy with one body shot, but otherwise the spread cancels out its use. And take a look at the spread pattern. Every shot will have at least one pellet hit exactly where you're aiming, but the other pellets spread in exactly the same way on either side. I thought it'd be clever and try to use this to my advantage when enemies are spaced out just like that, but whenever I'd hit more than one enemy at a time, the game would deny me the satisfaction. Oh, look at this, that was an awesome shot. Both of those flashes were headshots, but only one guy died? Sometimes even at close range, the shotgun just doesn't live up to its reputation as being powerful. Look at that, right in the head. Even firing the machine gun at full auto will land every bullet in the exact same place, no matter how far away you are. This lack of realistic recoil just feels a little bit unnatural. Strangely, the submachine gun allows you to target enemies from farther away than your pistol, so it's kind of your long-range weapon. And of course, if you need to send out a lot of bullets quickly, then it's the gun for the job. But otherwise, you can really get everything done with your pistol. Even the special weapons you find along the way, like a silenced pistol, a rocket launcher, and C4, have little to no use. You may find some creative uses for C4 on a boss fight, but otherwise it's useless. One really nice detail is that your guns have a chambered round that will stay in when you change your magazine out. You'll want to do double reloads just to have that extra shot ready. But don't do it with the automatic, as when you reload, you dump all the ammunition that was sitting in that magazine. In an effort to conserve ammo, you'll want to shoot the automatic down to that last chambered shot before reloading. It's a touch of simulation in an otherwise very arcadey shooter. I also really like the visual representation of ammunition in your gun. It just seems to make a lot more sense, as I never really picture ammo in a gun as just numbers, but physical bullets. It's a nice touch. Besides combat, Winback has a lot of puzzles, featuring environmental obstacles like these blue security lasers and these red death lasers. Each puzzle almost always plays out the same way. Find the box that powers the laser, 
shoot it, and continue on your way. These puzzles are sometimes frustrating, sometimes challenging, sometimes complex, but they won't require much thought. In fact, the game goes to great lengths to show you exactly what you need to do by flying the camera around, spoon-feeding you information. Really, the toughest bits are when you need to time your movement with sweeping death lasers. This one is just cruel. By the time you're almost through this death trap, these jokers run up behind you and turn the laser back on. So you basically have to do this sequence twice without ever touching the laser. Winmax multiplayer mode reminds me of the Nerf Wars I used to play with my best friend when we were kids. Alright, let's be honest, this footage is a lot more recent than that. But anyway, it turns out that Winmax multiplayer isn't nearly this fun. Up to four players can compete in a standard deathmatch, but you'll quickly realize that the game's cover mechanic is not well suited to this type of play. When you've come to a stalemate for the 20th time because no one wants to pop out and risk getting shot, you might try some of the other modes. These include a modified game of tag, and a couple of collect the cubes game modes. The stages are all built as very open, square arenas with lots of cover, but there's really not much to keep things interesting. I can't help but think that a cooperative campaign might have been a lot more fun, and it would have made this game really stand out in an age when GoldenEye and Mario Kart 64 were really the go-to multiplayer games. Winback was fairly well received when it came out in 99, but it hasn't aged very well. The graphics are foggy, muddy, and often bland, which doesn't help the sometimes repetitive gameplay despite the great control scheme. In fact, it gets repetitive in part because of the great controls. If you play enough, you may hit on a slight glitch of the aiming system that allows you to get a perfect headshot almost every time. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you do a camera lock with C down, you can pull back on the joystick while you pop out from behind cover and hit A. Your sight springs up to the target's face, and with the right timing you can get a headshot. And since there's zero recoil in the game, there's not random variation except for your own input. Sure, this takes a lot of skill and timing to get this to work, but once you master it, the only tough combat moments are boss battles, distant enemies, and any situation you find yourself in where you can't get behind cover. Repetition also manifests itself in the game's heavy reliance on backtracking, and while this is not in itself a bad thing, I mean, just think about all the backtracking in the Metroid series, in Winback it just feels like an artificial extension of the game. I swear you'll walk these steps at least a half dozen times. While the environments of the parking lots, office buildings, and warehouses initially look very natural and open, you'll soon realize that you are on a very linear path with little room for exploration. In the office building you come across lots of doors, but you're always greeted with John Luke saying, I just need to complete the objective, I can't go back now, or simply, the door is locked. The game has a very engineered feel to it. It's gone to great lengths to give you a false sense of freedom and choice, all while keeping you on a very set linear path. The game's final area does seem a bit more open and non-linear, as you can find a lot of weapon caches down some pathways, but even so, it resorts to the same backtracking and path rerouting techniques that you see throughout the game, this time in the form of these blast doors that close and open pathways, and these boxes that get shuffled around using switches. Winback was given a high-resolution makeover in 2001 when it was ported to the PS2, but it answered to poor reviews, as textures remained bland and laughable voice acting was added. Did they just fire the satellite again? This is taking way too long! We're in trouble now! A sequel also came out in 2006, but it also got pretty bad reviews. Winback is an interesting footnote in gaming history, and if nothing else, it was a nice diversion while gamers anxiously awaited Perfect Dark. If you're interested in older shooters, it might be worth a look as it still plays pretty well. So what do you think of Winback? Do you have any fond memories of playing the game back in the day, or better ideas for the name of the squad instead of SCAT? Let me know in the comments section. Check out Dome Candy Games on Google Plus and like us on Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>